Hey, what is up guys? My name is The Channel, waving my arms around. Welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're gonna to talk all about implicit construction, C++, implicit conversions, as well as what the explicit keyword actually means. So, implicit conversion, implicit construction, what am I talking about? Implicit means kind of without you explicitly telling it what to do. So it kind of automatic. That's what that word kind of means in this context. And what C++ is actually allowed to do, what the compiler is allowed to do is perform one implicit conversion on your code. Because if I kind of start using one data type as another and a conversion between the two exists, C++ will actually implicitly perform that conversion without you having to cast it or anything like that. We'll have a video on casting very soon. Casting is what we do to kind of convert from one data type to another. So this is best shown with an example, so let's take a look. I'm going to write a class here. It's going to be called entity. It's going to have a private string name. You guys know the drill, I've done this before. I'm also going to add an age to this. We'll create an entity constructor which takes in a name. I'll write const std string reference name. I'll assign name to name here. I'll also create another constructor which takes in an age. I'll assign name here to be unknown and age to be age. I should definitely also assign age over here. We'll set age to be negative one, meaning that it's invalid basically and no age was supplied. Okay, nice. So we have two constructors here, which are pretty simple. So the normal way that you would probably create these objects is by writing something like entity A, and then maybe giving it a name like Cherno, entity B, maybe giving this one an age instead, 22. That's actually how old I am for those of you wondering, because I get that question a lot for some reason. And you would kind of go about your day and not think twice, and this looks pretty simple. Maybe if you wanted to use equals, you would write your code like this. And it kind of looks normal, and this is how most people use objects and how most people instantiate objects. But what you can do, which a lot of people don't know, is just basically say that entity A is equal to Cherno, or entity B is equal to 22. Now this is a little bit weird because, well, first of all, you can't do this in other languages like Java or C Sharp, but second of all, entity B equals 22, what is entity an integer? I mean, no, it's got a string and it's got a name, but I can assign it to 22. What's going on here? This is called implicit conversion or implicit construction. It's implicitly converting that 22 into an entity and constructing an entity out of it because there's a constructor for entity which takes in an integer h, right? And there's a constructor for entity which takes in a name, cherno. Another example where you might see this is maybe you have a print entity function which takes in an entity and then maybe does some cool printing stuff. What you can actually do here is call that function with 22, right? And that looks weird because, well, hang on a minute, we don't have an overload for print entity which takes in an integer or something like that. We've just got one that takes in an entity, but remember, as far as C++ is concerned, 22 can be converted into an entity because you can call this constructor and suddenly from 22, which is the only parameter, you've made an entity. Now watch what happens when I try and call this print entity function with Cherno. You would kind of assume it to work, right? Because this did. No, it doesn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because this Cherno string isn't actually an STD string. It is a char array. It's a const char array of seven characters. We've got Cherno and then the null termination character. If you guys don't know how strings work, link up there, link in the description below, links everywhere. Go check that video out, very, very useful stuff. So in order for this to work, C++ would actually have to do two conversions. One from a const char array into a string and then one from a string to an entity and it's only allowed to do one implicit conversion. So for this to work, we would have to either wrap this inside a constructor like this, the string and suddenly this works fine or we could even wrap it just in an entity and that would work as well. Because in this case, it would be implicitly converting this string into a string, into an STD string, into a standard string, and then that would be pushed into the entity constructor and there's a constructor available. Okay, cool. So that's implicit construction. Pretty cool stuff. Can help simplify your code a lot. Personally, I try and avoid it as much as possible, except for some some cases when you're kind of assigning, it can get, it can kind of just simplify your code so you're not wrapping it with constructors all the time. But in general, 
I wouldn't be assigning this entity B to 22 like this. I personally would write code like this instead because in my opinion, it just looks a bit more clear. Now let's talk about what the explicit keyword is because it, it's very, very relevant to this. Explicit disables this implicit functionality. The explicit keyword is something that you put in front of a constructor. And if you write an explicit constructor, it means that no, 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 no implicit conversions. This constructor must explicitly be called if you want to construct this entity object with an integer, for example. So let's go back to having this implicit conversion here. If I go up here and I change this int h constructor to be explicit by sticking explicit out the front, you'll see that these both suddenly fail. I cannot do that anymore. If I want to do this, I need to either write code like that or explicitly cast it to an entity by doing this. We'll talk about casting in another video. There'll be a link up there and in the description below as well. Or we can of course just call that entity constructor like this as well. Okay, so those are kind of our options, but we can no longer just implicitly call code like this and expect it to work. It's not gonna happen. And of course, if we write explicit for this constructor, which takes in string, then of course, this is going to fail as well. Not this one just yet, because we are still, of course, actually calling the entity constructor, but everything else that is implicit like this one fails. And that is really the only function of that explicit keyword. It's for when you want your constructors to be explicitly called. Instead of allowing the C++ compiler to implicitly convert an integer into entity by just basically calling this constructor every time you try and do that. Okay, so that's what implicit is, that's what explicit is. Hopefully this clears some stuff up. As for when you wanna use this, I use explicit sometimes for things like math libraries. If I really don't want to be converting numbers to vectors all the time and I want to just ensure that my code is as safe as possible. Honestly, I don't find myself using it too often. When you're writing low level wrappers or things like that, it can come in handy and can prevent you from accidentally casting things and causing either performance issues or bugs. We'll kind of maybe talk about specific examples in the future if we run into them, but it's one of those things that you probably don't need to worry about too much. Just be aware of this keyword and what it can do for you. And the big the big takeaway I think from this video is just be, be aware that implicit construction exists. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support this series and make it even better by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. For people who do support the series, you do get some pretty cool rewards such as being able to see these episodes early, basically as soon as I'm done editing them, as well as contribute to the discussion of what goes into these videos in the future. If there's something in this video that you didn't understand, you can leave a comment below and I'll try and reply to as many as I can. But I also have a Discord server, link in the description below in which you can talk about this kind of stuff with with a handful of people i think there's like 200 people on the server now already so that's pretty cool definitely join up there link in the description below and i will see you guys in the next video goodbye